Yeah. Go. All right. We'll call the meeting 7 o'clock, February 5th. Welcome, everyone, and we're sorry that uh, Chief Altman and Dan Gokenauer couldn't be with us this evening, but we will carry on. Uh, now, uh, accept a motion to adopt the minutes of January 17th. I will make that motion. There's a motion. There's a second. There's a second. Any discussion regarding those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. I now entertain a motion to adopt the approvement of payment of bills in the amount of $40,300.98, broken down general funds, $45,76.50, fire fund, $21,980.73. Cemetery $53.29, EMS billing $8,493.53, and road and bridge $5,196.93. Is there a motion? Yes. I'll I'll second. Second. Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Nature? Yes. <clears throat> certain amount of correspondence since we've been gone for a little while. We'll go through first one being um, our anniversary um, proposal from Otarma, the Ohio Township Association Risk Management Authority for uh, Liability Insurance uh, for the Township for 2018. And uh, there's an anniversary information acknowledgement uh, that they want us to fill out uh, either um, reviewing and confirming that what's in here is correct and or changing or waiving uh, certain coverages. Um, generally, we just continue the way we've been. Uh, they do have an account contribution breakdown, but the total amount is uh, $17,935.50 uh, minus a uh, MBR credit, which is $42.50, which is roughly, um, oh, that's already included, I'm sorry, in the amount. Uh, that's a, 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 good, a good member discount <laughs> for all intents and purposes. That's about what it is. That is the same amount as last year, is it not, Margaret? I did not check. I didn't look it up. It does seem to be about the same. Yeah. yeah. As I recall, they said mm -hmm. the yearly contributions would be uh, pretty much the same. So this is our overall liability? Mm -hmm. Liability insurance for all and, our, and auto insurance. All our activities. Yeah. The only thing it's not is uh, health, dental, and uh, life. And we do get additional um, liability insurance for the volunteers of the fire department. Mm -hmm. Is about three thousand a year. That's different than this. So, pending a uh, in-depth review from you gentlemen, does anybody wish to uh, contract with Otarma again for next year's insurance package? I think that uh, since we contracted with them last year, we ought to do the same. <coughs> Just briefly, we have spent no end of deliberations going through from insurance company proposals to insurance company proposals over the, over the past few years. And the insurance company that we had been with for about eight, ten years roughly, um, you know, every year would propose, you know, how much it was going to cost to insure the township. And, yeah, I mean, every year it would go up eight or eleven or six or something percent. Uh, until it got to be non-competitive, especially with with this group, which is the group that uh, is formed by the Ohio Township Association. Uh, if you're all that familiar with the Otaro group, maybe you were with me. I, I actually went to their booth. There you go. So that's that's those guys, and now we're part of them. And the, one of the nice things about them is the um, the yearly premium, according to Mr. Welch, stays the same forever. <laughs> which is hard to believe, but at least for two years or three years, whatever, wherever we are, uh, it stayed roughly. So same. if we yeah. we vote to approve that, we still have to fill out. So 
some explanatory details, but the amount is the same. We fill out the one page of the anniversary questions about having reviewed it and agree in. We've and already, we, as in um, Colin and I, have already, there is like a, a renewal questionnaire, mm -hmm. especially if you've, we've, you know, lost a vehicle or mm -hmm. added or bought another property, whatever, you know, something, you know, change Which like we that. we did. We did. We did? We, we bought, bought a property. We bought a property. Oh. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I was thinking we had this. So um, anyway, so that that is done, you know, and submitted before they. So there might be a major change when we occupy the new. Well, I would expect. Yeah, I think that the new building will be have more value than. Going from three fifty to five seven, I imagine that's going to be my tip off. Okay, any other first further, further discussion about that? So we, we have no move. action necessary. Yes, there is. Did we? I thought we moved. No, no Mark moved. moved. Mark moved. Mark moved, and then you've had conversation. Okay. You did not second it? Well, I, if I didn't, I, I second it now. Okay. Then we had the conversation, so no further conversation. May we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. We also have an uh, invitation from the Yellow Springs Pollinator Regeneration Project, <laughs> <laughs> which is being held at Antioch Midwest uh, Wednesday this Wednesday from 7.30 to 9, uh, requesting someone from our auspicious board to be present. Um, Which night is that? This is Wednesday night. Yeah, so on. anyone interested in that can certainly is invited to attend. Um, we have our normal chamber information in the village. Uh, we have our request for new listings for the Red Book, which we don't have any changes for. I'll just remind you that the chamber meeting is, or the annual meeting is coming up. Mm -hmm. Next uh, Tuesday, is it? No, is what's happening? I think it's two weeks from. Oh, you sure? I thought it was like the 15th. I think it's the 15th. Uh, 15th we have a uh, <laughs> symposium registration in Berlin Agricultural Protest and Community Solutions information about farming for a small planet, if anybody's interested in being that. Um, we have a confirmation after 2015, roughly three years of going back and forth with Village Yellow Springs on exercising the option on the additional cemetery property behind the natural burial cemetery. Apparently that deed has finally found its way to the recorder's office uh, under great stress and has been recorded and in within 10 days is supposed to be signed off and back to us and so that's so, done. So remind me, what's this? This is an, okay. an, an additional five acres behind? Yeah, it's almost six. When, uh, when, when, the, when the Glen Forest Association back in the day in 2006 uh, purchased the property across the street from the old Cemetery, which is now being used, obviously, as Glen Forest, it was broken down into uh, uh, two parcels. Actually, it was only one parcel. It was, the one parcel was split, and then there was an option on a parcel behind that main parcel. And the option was a 10-year option for that, uh, which had expired at the time the association decided to disband, and my township then had you know, the great taking over the whole thing uh, after negotiations with the village. Anyway, but we asked for, as part of the setting up the whole who's doing what sort of thing with the village and everything, we asked for uh, our ability to exercise the option on that parcel um, the same way it was extended to the association. Although, I take that back, they were going to sell it to the association and we were going to, we asked for it for a dollar and fine, and there it sat, and there it sat, there it sat, until last week. So now we have six more acres. Practically, it's, it's five point eight. Yeah, yeah. And the transaction is, yeah, is being recorded. Yeah. It's got Richard's official, official signature on it and everything. <laughs> so this young paralegal from Coolidge Wall took it upon herself to walk that through, along with, with the help of Lou, uh, Lou Green, Green, who 
did the survey way back. Did the when. survey, and I spoke to him at least ten times, and I think he and Barbara spoke about ten times. Mm -hmm. He took a trip by himself down to Peggy Middleton at the at the auditor's office, and <laughs> and and tried to walk it through with her, and he got halfway through it, and then Barbara went down and she walked it the other half of the way. So apparently, got done. You know how that happens. Um, Yes, more internal. Uh, Green County Council on Aging Insights uh, for everyone. Uh, the, this past um, monthly meeting from the from the health department. Um, a uh, invitation. Apparently, he's doing it individually because uh, I only well at least I got mine from Bob Geyer for the uh, March uh, engineers m dinner meeting. Um, I got one too. Okay, good. He used to just send it to everybody and then, or yeah, and we just send it back as a group, but uh, yeah, yeah. now we're all getting it ourselves. Uh, Remind me though that date. It's uh, March 13th, Tuesday. If you want to go, you have to register and then choose a meal. You're mm -hmm. talking, that's what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, Mark, did you want to address that? Just simply because there it is. Come up in there. Um, I did attend this this particular meeting at uh, which was held at Green. Why don't you tell the audience what the meeting was about? Yeah, the the meeting was about um, the permit that was applied for by the Enon Sand and Gravel Company. Um, and the name would imply that they weren't going to be doing any blasting, uh, just the washing of sand and gravel and you know that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they would be um, blasting and uh, quarrying limestone, which uh, was a whole different uh, procedure and uh, our concern. And there was, um, oh gosh, 30 to 50 speakers. How big was the audience? For a long night. <laughs> yeah, it did. I would say it went from, well, six to nine, anyway. Were there were over a hundred people. Um, the audience, I'm not good at uh, estimating that size, but the, the meeting was held in the Green and cafeteria, and it was full to overflowing. Well, that's more than a hundred. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say that it was a very good, productive, informative meeting. I learned uh, a lot about uh, uh, the concerns and the experiences of the uh, people who live in that particular area. Um, and we are uh, technically not in that area, but we are. I mean, um, the the boundaries are man-made, not uh, not. Uh, well, would you say we're not in the watershed, but we can't tell what the groundwater patterns are? We right. May well, go well, into our aquifer. I went to um, Houston when it was a middle school. It's now closed as a, uh, it was an elementary school, but um, Houston Road, um, 
intersects with Mud Run Creek, I believe. And uh, that, that whole um, uh, geological structure is something that, that does concern um, the, the health and well-being of the overall community. Glad you went. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, notification from the director of the or not MBRP, but Green, Green County Regional Planning, uh, notifying of a meeting that uh, I need to go to on Wednesday the eighth to interview two candidates for the his replacement for the new director position. And I will. I intend to do that. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, there's also a ton of regional planning <laughs> stuff. I maybe that was, from the, was that from the, the previous meeting, maybe? I don't know, there was a lot of pan down material. Yeah, uh, there may be some overlap, because that was both from the executive board meeting and the, and the regular board meeting uh, this past month, so that's possible what that is. Um, also have a, a memo, or a uh, email from the uh, health department uh, asking me to set a date for our yearly district advisory council meeting which I am the president which gives me the authority to set the meeting date and time which I have done and so it will be March 20th of this year at 6 p.m. At, uh, at the county health department uh, she was upset because the new county health building will not be Occupiable um, at that time, but they're getting close. She's all excited. I'm sure we'll get to check it all out. Uh, the agenda from our most recent MBRPC meeting uh, was relatively short but sweet. It was uh, approval of a lot of transportation pieces and um, an interesting, although quite drawn out, long range planning socio economic forecast from. Their, uh, their offices. Um, Margaret got her. Hands on there. Margaret got her. Hmm? It was assigned to me. But I know. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, which is. Well, which is not transportation yeah. survey. Yeah. I mean, oh, you mean go out and count the cars? No, well, no, no, it's about. Are we? In, well, go ahead, Chris. It, it wants us to uh, uh, to to list the projects that we are undertaking with. The federal funds and uh, <laughs> oh, all of them. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a quickie. <laughs> yeah. It Thank is. you. We'll take care of that. Um, I've looked at that while I was at the convention and said, "Nah, I don't want to do that." League of League of Women Voters. Um, mail out. I'm not sure what that is. It's a newsletter. I mean, it's, it's a newsletter. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Annual. It's our monthly newsletter. Uh, an invitation to the. Uh, uh, Honoring uh, the Parity Incorporated's Top 10 African American Male Award for 2018, uh, held in Dayton on, uh, date, date, date. on February, Thursday, February 15th at 11.30 a.m. at the Pilot Center at uh, Sinclair Community College. Uh, Gerald Sims is one of the uh, 2018 honorees. Anybody has a mind to attend? Uh, Tickets are seventy dollars each. Um, a new proposal uh, from Pontum. Pontum is our cemetery software, uh, the database that uh, that we purchased. How long ago? Three years? Three years or so? Three years or so? And and I'm. Still adding, <laughs> still adding burials into it, but I'm down to down to the pretty much the bottom of the barrel for that. So um, we're almost completely, uh, completely full up in, in the database. And what we have here is that we have a proposal for um, their their uh, their uh, their module, their addition for an online search ability. And so what it would be would be they would they would 
tag, tag onto our township website with a search the cemetery records, and it would be for all four cemeteries, uh, you know, the Glen Forest Cemetery, Clifton Cemetery, Grinnell Mill, or Grinnell Family Cemetery, and the Pleasant uh, Grove uh, Cemetery outside of town. And so anyway, so an individual would be able to uh, do a, a historical search of the cemeteries uh, by name, by grave uh, address, and would also allow them to identify where these people were buried, uh, access whatever genealogical information they had, um, uh, be able to review what's, what's on there and not make corrections, but uh, offer corrections to the administrator. Uh, it's a it's a nineteen hundred dollar setup charge for it to get uh, it get up and running, and about a hundred dollars a month um, fee to you know to to, to access the information. Uh, we have we spoke all along with this with with getting this cemetery software together that we were in hopes that we'd be in a position once the database was filled to be able to take it to the uh, level where the public could access it, and I feel we're at that point now. Uh, Clifton Cemetery does um, financially contribute to, but there's a yearly maintenance fee for the for the actual programs themselves, and we split that Clifton Cemetery 60-30? Six, what? Well, third? Yeah, yeah third, two thirds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Third, two thirds. Um, and. Um, being a member of the Clifton Cemetery Board, uh, if you see fit, you know you might bring it before the cemetery board and ask them if they, um, you know, want to contribute to the search. So this, this is a hundred. The, the ongoing cost would be a hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Hundred dollars a month. That's very surprising for software. Well, it's, anyway, it's, I'd, I'd like to look at this. And, sure. And uh, it's it's. Not act tonight. All right, it's been on the table, so yeah, I, I yeah. read it. And then my question to you two, um, Me? yeah, um, cemetery ish, cemetery ish, <laughs> um, is, is this a, a service that, that uh, you would value? I mean, uh, that. Mm -hmm. Um, well, for instance, um, would it tell you where someone is buried if we don't already know that they're buried there? Well, and yeah. what I'm thinking about is is um, is the fact that um, I had thought that cemeteries would be laid out and uh, that it would be an easy uh, find to find that so-and-so is buried in such and such. You know what Chris has been doing, which has been adding, mm -hmm. you know, everybody right. that we know is into the grid or whatever, the mm -hmm. system. So I, I don't know the answer. Mark, it depends how big the cemetery is and how carefully records were kept. <laughs> Period. It has well, nothing to do with, I mean, there's nothing magical about about software, mm -hmm. it's just one way of of looking through the records. Mm -hmm. But it can't make up things that aren't that we don't already know. Right. And one more aside, we currently are uh, in the ability have the ability to find financially fund that through the cemetery. But what but what happens now? In my understanding, is that when somebody calls and is. Do you have, I, I we is, think maybe or some, you know, great-great-grandma is, great is, is in buried, the cemetery, yeah. can you find out for us? And then Chris or Dan, I don't know how to, mm -hmm. I get to, get to learn, you know, how to use it, but mm -hmm. he can look it up, is it right? Mm -hmm. but, but the extra $100 would enable the public to skip the phone call and get into the system themselves. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. right? Directly yeah, too. yeah directly so how many calls they can do you type get in now? somebody's name and then, huh? How many calls a year do you get now? Oh, a dozen or so. So that's but, you know so that's a hundred dollars a call. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, yes, it's not necessarily the only people. I mean, you know, uh, perhaps a lot of people don't know 
don't know where to call. Uh, you know, this is a system that's got to, you know, that's got to build its own, you know, it's got to build its own base. Uh, you know, it, this is not going to be a money-making prop, prop proposition. This is going to be a service rendering no, you know, sort of thing to mm -hmm. the public. Uh, is our database going to be linked to websites that are, you know, find a grave or something like that? I don't know if that's... I mean, if you already have to know to come to Miami Township, then right now you go to the Miami Township website and you get the phone number. Later you can go to Miami Township and, and access the database. But, you know, as I say, right now we're... At the, at the same rate, we're, it's, called, it's $100 a phone call if a dozen people are calling us. And those same dozen people can, you know, if they, do the, if they have the computer and do the sort and all, then we don't have to handle a dozen calls. Right, but in five years it might be... Might be more. Factor of 10 now. I don't, I don't know. As yeah, I say, this is a service to the public. It's, it's not a, you know... It's not a money-making thing, and it was part of you know what we wanted to do when we went into the mm -hmm. uh, into the software you know business about the cemetery to try and you know get all of this information that was nowhere to be found. I mean, literally nowhere to be found. <laughs> that was dug up. No, no, no. There's no and, question and, about organizing the data we have so, and, and putting in a database. I think that makes lots of sense. What I'm trying, to, what I'm thinking about is, like Don, I sort of react to what is the company using that hundred dollars each month for? Well, that's probably it's a pretty business. stiff mm -hmm. fee if they're not providing some I don't, yeah, service I don't think beyond setting up the initial program, which is already nineteen hundred dollars. Um, I okay, and, and I'm not I'm not disagreeing with anybody. But it's either, it, it literally is this or nothing. There's no other way to do it. Uh, about how many, I mean, very roughly, what's the total number of records? To, I mean, 5,000 people, 10,000 people? No, it's about 12 to 14,000. And accompanying uh, genealogical information with them. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the, people in the database, but over these years, you know, I've added as much information as I can find about cause of death, the mm -hmm. place of death, their, what genealogical information their, their relatives there are, um, you know, th those sorts of, you know, those sorts of uh, pieces of information that are, that are now in there. There's also photographs of a, of a substantial amount of the tombstones, it's certainly not by any means all of them, but there's there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's also um, the ability, and I've been putting them in as I as I can, of adding obituaries to everyone's uh, everyone's records. So that's in there, and, and at least the ones that we had available to us. Um, so anyway, well, I I would like to learn more about this. I'd like to roll it over before we mm -hmm. commit. Okay. Is there a a deadline on deciding this? Nope, absolutely not. Yeah. You've got to start somewhere, that's all. I, I would say that uh, one of the weird facts that, uh, mm -hmm. that I acquired was um, the prevalence of carriage accidents. <laughs> They're the same as automobile accidents. You just never think of them. Uh, you know, of the person being killed in a carriage accident. This is a horse carriage. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. People get run over. <laughs> People fall down. down. I mean, yeah. I mean. Is there any other correspondence <laughs> in or out? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Mark? Um, I mean, actually, this counts. I didn't, I, I didn't put this out for the board simply because it really mm -hmm. is only for you. Yeah. You know? Well. I'm looking at uh, you can share it, but the the city of Overland and the uh, ideas being presented for uh, uh, incentive policies for the village. This is a copy of the incentives for uh, 
the city of community of Oberlin. Um, Incentives to do what? Um, to establish a business. Um, so this is Economic Sustainability Commission yeah, I stuff. Suppose. Um, I tend to think about things too much. But uh, and originally it was community resources, which was a different emotional, intellectual concept from economic sustainability, at least to me. Um, economic um, sustainability is um, is a more current um, village pursuit. Uh, community resources, you look at uh, what you've got and uh, decide what to try to do with it. Economic sustainability um, involves looking at what you've got, but it also involves bringing in and potentially um, promoting uh, via incentives <coughs> to uh, pursue those uh, procedures, those businesses. So these documents have to do with your serving on the Economic Sustainability Committee mm -hmm. or the Commission or whatever. Being involved. Yep. Um, I believe I had one more come in today. It was after, yes, it was after. And it was an invoice from a supplier for the new fire station. So I'm going to slip that over that direction. And then that will be that. Will be that. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving we'll right along. Fire department report. Oops, no fire chief. <laughs> well, how about uh, new fire department? Um, fire department report. One thing I, I do have that remember that report that was uh, given to us last uh, meeting that Alex went and made up about uh, potential changes in staffing that would be beneficial to uh, uh, to the department. Um, I'm sure you read those over and memorized them. Mm -hmm. uh, the salient point for me was, was his most preferred staffing uh, uh, scenario, and I have asked the chief to put together some finances, some financial numbers as to you know what that would impact the budget if that scenario were to be. Uh, and he was going to have that tonight, but he's off ill this evening, so we won't get that right this minute. So anyway, he was working on that for us. Uh, new fire department uh, information. Um, we're waiting, basically, we're waiting for the Green County Building Department to uh, approve or do whatever they're going to do with the, pla uh, with the plans for the new fire house. Uh, and we're waiting, obviously, to get the permit is issued from them because we need to get that permit uh, and then forward that permit with the plans to USDA and have USDA review them from their architectural review board in Columbus. Um, and they have a, uh, uh, they actually have a 60 day window to do that, but uh, the USDA representative, Ashley Kelly, thinks that they probably would turn that over in about two weeks. At that point, uh, bids would go out for uh, the construction. And it was kind of funny that we were at the OTA convention this, this past week, and uh, I was chatting with my new friend, older new friend, whatever, Jason Thunderbird, who works for Chris Weidner and his architectural firm, who also bid on doing this job, but, and he was just kind of interested in where we were and you know, what, uh, what was going on, and I was telling him. And he, said, and he was saying, well, uh, are you going to be bidding this out as prime plus, you know, bids, or are you going to have a general uh, general contractor, or are you going to have a construction manager do it? And I'm going, 
<laughs> I probably ought to figure out what, you know, what, yeah. which one of these things are doing. You know, because uh, like everything else, I was just thinking all along, well, you know, we've got all these, we've got all these different sub suppliers, designers for the art, for the foundation, and for the mechanical, and for the engineering, and the and the communications. I just figured we'd be sending out RFQs left and right, and our RFPs left and right, and, and opening bid packages until we were, you know, until we were burning the midnight oil. So then I walked down to the, our MSA architects booth and chatted up with our architect. He says, hell no, we haven't done that for 50 years. <laughs> he says, we'll just have one general contractor, we'll, we'll put the bid out and we'll, we'll, we'll post it and, and half a dozen of them will, you know, send something in and we'll open them up and see where we are. So I said, that's that a lot easier than, <laughs> than, uh, uh, than, than opening them all up. So I said, mm -hmm. no, so I went back to Jason. I said, Jason, we've got a general contractor. We don't know what's taking <laughs> bid packages. Mm -hmm. with, with the, if I heard correctly, with the exception of a few parts of the package that we're going to do in-house, mm -hmm. so you have to yeah. excerpt those or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, so that's kind of where we are. We're, uh, we're going to have another conference call on the 13th for no particular reason at this well, point. Simply aren't you still trying to knock down the um, the cost because we're over budget? No, we've already done that. We finished, we wrapped that up. Yeah. Um, we have unfortunately gotten ourselves, I mean, it's just the way it is, we've gone from a 10% contingency on this project, uh, which would be $575,000, uh, we then found we were over budget on when when it was sent out for estimating um, about two months ago we were sent out for estimating and it came back over budget so we cut out a bunch of things and then also dropped the contingency by half from 10 percent to five percent uh, obviously that's 200 plus thousand dollars and then things were sent back out for further estimation and it came back and we were still way over budget by about $175,000. And at this point, it was at the what's called the 95% completion rate. So they pretty much knew the cost of every, uh, every nut and bolt in the, in the building. So there wasn't a whole lot of wiggle room on, on picking that up. So they thought a bunch of things and, and we nixed them. I mean, this is down to, you know, Deleting whiteboards from the fitness room and you know changing changing hundreds of thousands not much of dollars. No, it, was a, it was a lot of items but it didn't didn't change it by a whole lot and then they knocked the contingency down another half down to five percent um, which is kind of which is kind of iffy but that's down to ninety thousand dollars now as a contingency if they take the plans and send it out to estimators. How do they come up with the number that they started with? That, you know, we said, this is our budget, make us a building that matches our budget. Richard, that's why we pay them $410,000 right, for that to, service. And they're not doing it. Well, I know, but apparently this is, this is the way it's done. Because mm -hmm. it's the way it's done for us. Yeah, and then, and then you're going to have cost overruns that are bigger than your contingency. Well, we're hoping not. And they yeah, have a... Mm -hmm. Well, they, they would not have, have, have a out. contract that doesn't allow cost overruns. Okay. Uh, <laughs> There's no such yeah, thing. Uh, that would work, but anyway. Um, they are sure from their expertise and experience. I mean, I don't know if, how much you've uh, researched MSA, but they are probably the premier architect in the Midwest. And uh, it's certainly have built far more firehouses uh, in this area than, than than any other group. And I mean recent firehouses, not just back in the 60s. So they are confident that um, with their estimator, who they say tends to estimate on the high side to try and you know, make sure that you know, nobody gets caught too, you know, too much of a squeeze. And um, and the contingencies that we have that the bids will come in um, where we need to be. And if they don't, 
We can start all over again and, and re, you know, change the specs and rebid it. If and they have very few cost overruns. It's like less than less than one percent. What would be the basis for a cost overrun if someone if a contractor ninety percent of the time apparently it's it's owner driven. I don't like that window. I want to change it you know, to a mm -hmm. door and such and such. So as long as we keep our, you know, keep our fingers out of the pie, you know, we're going to be in pretty good shape. All right. And our fingers were in the pie in terms of, you know, how we wanted the building to be accessed and mm -hmm. to be um, the facade and that sort of thing, including the roof. Um, you know, we had several meetings with MSA and uh, they were good. Yeah, this they, board has been, I think, very much involved, but even more importantly, the fire department and the EMS department mm -hmm. have been very much, very much. Uh, involved with, with MSA mm -hmm. in spelling out their, you know, their requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, and as everybody knows, if you, you know, if you're a fireman or a DMS guy, there's no such thing as not enough or it's too much money <laughs> to spend. There's always another shiny thing you got to have. Right. Anyway, that's where we are. Um, hopefully, a year from today, we'll, we'll all have hair on our heads. <laughs> <laughs> Based on being reminded this winter that, that it does snow and all. What will happen when, when ODOT comes along and plows snow all in front of the driveway? <laughs> uh, Dan Goke and I will come along and plow As often as they, if the they run their plow, you'll come and mm -hmm. push yeah, it out of probably. the way. Yeah, more likely. Or we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll go to... Because they, they can make a big barrier pretty fast. We'll go to Rural King and get a bunch of snow shovels and have them sitting in the bay. And You're right across the street, Richard. You can step out there. Oh, right. step. You know how long <laughs> it takes to do my own <laughs> little area? I watched you shovel on that, that you're, apron you're for good about shape. three days. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that we're getting off the subject. Okay, well, I just that's something that occurred. Xenia Avenue doesn't generally have curb cuts, so there aren't generally those kinds of problems. And, but I was used to dealing, you know, dealing with it on the other side of the street with 830 Zing Avenue, and and I would literally, the truck would come, I would shovel all that out of the way for an hour, and it would come again and put it all back again. Well, I, I would I would put the front of, of one of those engines up against virtually yeah, any, any amount of snow that, <laughs> that, that a plow's going to push. I guess that's the mm -hmm. critical. Okay, fiscal officer's report. Oh. Okay. Oh, just, just one thing before we go on, since we didn't have a cemetery report, because Dan is in there. Right now, with the almost in the township's hands cemetery extension, is that just going to be left as it is for the present time, or? I think so. Okay. I think so. There, 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 there really were no immediate plans for it. Um, there was some discussion on, on, a, on a hybrid natural burial and traditional burial uh, about you know, using, using uh, uh, what do you call them? Trees. I mean, I know you call them trees. <laughs> but, um, no, no. Memorial trees. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, and then, you know, under the canopy of mm -hmm. the memorial trees, have the ability to put traditional. The, the tree would be placed. I mean, would have been would have been placed on the the body of the person who the tree was memorializing, right. and then. Uh, around that is the ability for the yeah, tradition. You have to so, figure out how you maintain the, yeah. the trees. Yeah. So that's a okay. good project for... But, but so right now it's just going to stay just like it is. Yeah. You're not going to immediately go in and clear it or, mm -hmm. or mow it or anything no. else. Okay. No, actually there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, organic, luckily, hopefully, organic material that the village, excuse me, that the village had put in there from wherever they dug it up. Hmm. Uh, over the years, and there are large, like 15 foot high mounds, at, um, two or three hundred feet long of, of this material. Those are windrows of. Yeah, there's yeah. like two or three of those. And so, before anything gets cleared, that's that's a lot of material that's got to either be. Well, if you just be patient, it'll slow things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I got patience. I'm not sure enough. But 
Margaret, what you got? I have um, a resolution for you all to consider, and it's an amendment of temporary appropriations, and it's resolution 2018-06, whereas it is an ongoing process to determine appropriations for the fiscal year 2018, and whereas it is required to submit any and all appropriation changes made to the 2018 budget to the county auditor. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize the following changes to the temporary appropriations and instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor. That is, an increase in the telephone appropriation for the fire department by $800. Also in the fire fund, I increased natural gas by 1000 and contracted services by 1500 And then in the general fund, I increased um, contracted services by $4,300. And that's it. Okay, is there a motion to approve resolution 2018-6-6? I so move. I so move. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. So, um, all that being said, I did give, Chris has given me some figures for the budget for 2018, the permanent appropriations. And um, I haven't gotten anything from anybody else, um, which is not some crime. I'm just saying that um, we have until April 1st, technically, to before we have to have our, our permanent appropriations in place. I'd prefer it to be much sooner. Um, uh, but I won't be at the next meeting. I'll be out of town. So um, if anybody gets, you know, if you, if you want me, if you got, I'm talking to you and Don and Mark, mm -hmm. if you, um, have something you want to submit, or if you want to take a look and look at what, or look at what Chris has done, um, I'll put that. I can put that on the table in there and give it a week or so. And if you guys want to look over it, that's fine. And if you see something, let me know because I would like to kind of get things in place. By the end of February. Yeah. Well, I mean, I won't be at the next meeting. I mean, I would. I would be. I, I, in a way, I would. Mm -hmm. I would go ahead and submit the uh, the suggested permanent appropriations. But it seems like me being a fiscal officer, I should kind of be at the meeting, which pushes us to the first meeting in March. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. I think that's fine. That all being said, so, mm -hmm. you know, carry on, if you will, as, as that way, and, and um, see what you feel about that. Yeah, um, if you would leave it on the... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll leave um, Chris's, I'll tape it to mm -hmm. the table so nobody takes it. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then we can um, review it then. But it, you, so you have that time to, mm -hmm. to look at it. Um, and... I am uh, busy learning about uh, capital fund monies and the fund that we have, and been with, with the auditor today, and and uh, Cindy Cameron, who is from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, because the township did receive a sizable amount of money um, deposited into our checking account on Friday to help pay for all the expenses that we're incurring, and um, I first have to get that certified by the county auditor, which is going to happen PDQ. And then I can start spending out of that money that we've been receiving. So <clears throat> we're on the upswing in that department. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Wait. Inspector. Did we, did you go? we did vote, didn't we? Yeah. Yes, we did. Okay, good. General. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's it's uh, winter, there's been a just a tiny bit of activity, uh, but nothing to get too excited about. Um, Gary Bayard split off on his 30 acres that he has out on Hilt Road, a three acre track that actually already has a house on it. Just wanted to, to separate that out, probably to sell it to his relative who is living in it. But as a part of that, he's also putting in a new driveway. So um, Dan and I worked out the, the culverts and gave him a permit to do that. We also have a message from somebody who wants to uh, put in a driveway. Well, something just, just came in a few days ago. It, it, it wasn't oh, on Saturday? It wasn't on your phone, it was on our phone. Oh, it was on your phone? Oh, okay. I was going to say, I thought I'd get in since then. I left you a post it note. Oh, okay. Um, well, I will find out about that okay. right after the meeting. Um, in a non zoning related matter, you know what's going on with Canon? Where they are with that? Oh. Cemetery. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I got it. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, the 
you know, we, we contracted with a, with a company in Springfield to refurbish, rebuild as it's necessary, the, the supports, and they, um, the, the way it was originally bid was that they were going to rebuild them and then take the whole piece and have it hot dip galvanized, or the two pieces. Mm -hmm. as, and we had several bids and each one had a different strategy for how, how you're going to preserve this iron <laughs> once you put it back together. But that was basically the problem was it was just rusting away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it turns out in their repair work, all of the old work is, is sheet metal iron riveted together except the pieces that actually hold the can. Mm -hmm. They were cast iron to be round to match those trunnions. Well, one of those had cracked, and the first thing they did was they brazed it back together, which was kind of logical. But it turns out that once you braze something, you can't hot dip galvanize it. Really? So uh, right now, there's kind of like, well, wait a second. <laughs> How are we you know, going to finish this, mm -hmm. this job? So that's that's a little glitch that's come up. I just I just got that information in between lodge meetings, mm -hmm. and so a week from tomorrow I'll find out probably what's what's actually going mm -hmm. on. But at any rate, the the sort of slow but steady work is is being done, and our mm -hmm. uh, our goal is to have it all done definitely by Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, and sure. the only other aspect of it that's that we're, we're looking at is um, making some kind of a you know, bronze or aluminum, whatever plaque that, that has just a little bit of information about, about the, not the whole history, but you know, this cannon was put here by the JR at this date, and when this happened this time, and, and this latest re, you know, refurbishing took place in, in 2018 or whatever. And, there's a little bit of that, that idea everybody's on board with. How, where you actually end up putting the plaque <laughs> is another another little piece of discussion. But those are the two two things that, are, that in the last meeting I had came up. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it, it all seems to be good. Good. Glad to hear. Thank you. Um, we're not doing standing committee reports at the moment. Uh, New business. Any, Can I do this? Actually, you have you have the original. I have an unsigned one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I we can all sign that. So yes. Yeah. Can send that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, first, the new business is our yearly contract for snow removal and street repair with the village of Clifton. Uh, it basically reads, my township will supply a service of snow removal and street repair to the village of Clifton, Ohio, for the year of 2018 for the sum of fifty dollars per hour and material cost. Fiscal officer of Miami Township shall prepare and submit the invoice to the clerk of Clifton. For street or sign repair, please contact Miami Township Road employee, Mr. Dan Bilkenar, 477-0597. That would be us. Um, I would entertain a motion to enter into that contract with the Village of Clifton. So move. There's a motion. Uh, second. second. And a second. Any further discussion regarding that contract? I would only ask, are they, can we assume that they are looking at the same piece of paper tonight? Uh, they will be looking at this piece of paper after we send it to them. Yeah. Okay. And then they'll yeah, return it. It's been an annual arrangement for Forever. a long, 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 long time. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nope. Can we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. So everybody can sign, pick a line and sign up um, in the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I also have a. Uh, uh, fire service contract for uh, between Miami Township and, and, and Green Township, Clark County. It's resolution 2018-7. Uh, it reads, whereas trustees of Green Township, Clark County, uh, desire to secure fire services for all their residents, and whereas trustees of Miami Township desire to provide said fire services to the citizens of Green Township within incorporated limits of Village of Clifton from the period of January 1, 18 to December 31st, 18, and whereas mutually agreed upon cost for the service has been determined to be a flat sum of $1,500 for the fire services. Therefore, be it resolved, resolution of agreement has been passed by the Miami Township Board of Trustees at a public meeting January 5th, 2018. Is there a motion for that uh, resolution 2018-7 approval? I'm going to make that. 
Sure. Uh, uh, so move. Moved. Is there a second to that? Yep. Mark oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear Mark. Oh, that's okay. uh, any further discussion regarding resolution 2018-7? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Hockett? Yes. There we go. Let's see. Any further uh, new business this evening? Old businesses, even. Mark? Mm -hmm. Done? Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no, no additional business. Um, I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I would make that motion. And I'll second it. All right. We're going to adjourn. Aye. Mm -hmm. Did you say bye? Yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs>